Welcome to Learning Jira Quickly. Before we get started, I would like to mention that the Jira version being used for this tutorial is Atlassian Jira version 6.4. This is the latest version at the time of this recording and this is the version that you'll see in all the videos. If you already don't have Jira, there are two ways to get Jira. One is the cloud method and with this method you don't need to install anything or download anything. You can just sign up for Jira and it's hosted on their site and you can get started in as quickly as five minutes. You just sign up and they provide you the URL and you can just get started. If you do like more control over it, there is a local install available and it provides you full control over how you want to install it and configure it. So this is an option that's also available and the instructions are provided here. The slides are part of the downloadable material. So you can just download these slides and click on these links to get started. So let's get started. I hope you have the Jira installed ready and let's cover the basic concepts in Jira. When you start learning about Jira or hearing about Jira, you'll hear people talk about issues, projects, components, workflows. These are the main concepts in Jira and we'll cover each of these. So let's start with a project. What is a project? A Jira project is basically a collection of issues. Any issue that you create, it must belong to a project when you create a project is created with a name and a key and a key is very important because once you create it it cannot be changed and it's used as an identifier for that project so that when you create an issue the key will be appended to each issue as its prefix so for example if you have a project called social media site and the project key is called sm then issue if you add an issue called add a new friend the issue will be appended with SM, which is the project key and the number of the issue. What is an issue? An issue is the building block of the project. So it's the very, very basic block. An issue can represent many things and depending on how your organization is using Jira, an issue could be used to represent a bug in the software, task in a project, a help desk ticket, a product improvement, a leave request from client. So it is the very basic block that you start using in Jira. In some companies, it's also called tickets. So an issue might also be referred to as a Jira ticket. What is a component? A component are subsections of a project. So when you create a project, you can create its components so that the issues can be grouped more logically and into smaller subparts. So for example, let's say you have a project called project one. You can create various components for it. And in a software environment, some of the most common components are UI, DB, server, bug, or any of the other components you can create. And then you can have if you have various issues in that project, you can start grouping it into the different components. So it's easier to identify for which issues, which components they belong to. And the traceability of the issues also becomes easier. What is a workflow? When you start working with issues and projects, you'll start to hear about the various workflows an issue can go through. And a workflow is basically set of status and transition that an issue can go through its life cycle. And workflow usually represent business processes. Jira does come up with a default organization, but it can be customized to fit your organization. Workflow status and transition. So once you first create an issue, it's an open state. And some of the other possible status are it can go into in progress. It could be resolved, it could be closed, or it could be reopened. So these are the, on the left hand side, these are the possible status that the issue can go through. And depending on which status it wants to go through, it will go through the possible transitions. For example, when you first start creating an issue and you start working on it, it will go in, you will click on start progress and then the status will change into in progress. You can stop its progress or you can resolve it and then it will go into resolved. You can reopen it, resolve and close. So depending on which transition you take, 
the status will get changed accordingly. This is the Jira default workflow. Let's use this image to make things more clear. So once you first create an issue, it's waiting for triage. After this stage, it can either go into in progress, which means you start working on it. And after you have worked on it, you can either close the issue or you can resolve the issue. What's the difference between closed and resolved? Closed means that you are completely satisfied with it and it's ready to be released. And usually in software environments, from in progress, if you have fixed an issue, you'll usually change it to resolved so that the QA team can look at it or someone who filed the Jira ticket or issue can take a look at it and are satisfied with the solution. And after the QA person or whoever the owner of the Jira ticket is, will move it from resolved to close. From resolved, if the solution is not to satisfaction, it could be reopened, which means it will go back into in progress and the cycle will start again. So now that we have looked at the various basic concepts of Jira, let's look at what we'll cover in this course. So we already looked at the Jira concepts and you're well on your way to becoming a Jira expert. We will also look at the Jira administration task. For this section, you do need to have administrative privileges. So if you do have administration privileges and you want to learn more about projects, user management, group management, this section will cover it. If you're not interested in the Jira administration task, just listen to the recording so you are familiar with it in case it does come up in future. In section three, we'll cover all about the different things we can do with issues. We'll talk about creating new issues, updating and editing existing issues. We'll also take a look at some of the advanced functionality in issues. For example, we'll take a look at cloning them, linking them, creating subtasks for them, converting it to subtasks, voting on an issue, watching in an issue, and various other actions that are available on an issue. And we will also look at workflow and life cycle of an issue, how it's used in practice and what is the life cycle we can go through and we will go through the various transitions and statuses that we just talked about in the previous slides. In addition, we'll also cover Epics. Um, it is available in Jira Agile plugin. So if you do have Jira Agile plugin and you're working in an Agile and Scrum environment, you probably have access to Epic. Take a look at how to create an Epic and how to assign different stories and tasks to Epics. If you don't have Jira Agile, feel free to skip this lecture on Jira Agile. In section four, we'll take a look at search and filters. Jira comes with very good search functionality. We will take a look at the basic, basic search and also advanced search using JQL so that you can quickly find issues that you're interested in. And we'll also take a look at how to save those searches using filters and how to get email notification from those filters so we don't have to keep going back to Jira every day and any issue that you're interested on, we can set the email notification on the filter and get email on them. And Jira also comes with very good reports. Out of the box, we'll take a look at the various reports that we can use and configure. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started and learn Jira quickly.